Hi, I'm John Henderson, <coughs> Product Line Manager for North America for ESOB Cutting and Welding Products. Hi, I'm Kevin Flans. I am a night instructor at ETI School of School Trades. I'm in my 33rd year in HVAC. I was a union pipe fitter for 27 of them. Uh, I have my own company, Blue Horizon, heating and air conditioning now. And uh, we basically do a lot of sheet metal, construction, new construction, uh, equipment uh, change outs, et cetera. With the launch of the new Edge PFH 800 nitrogen purging regulator, we wanted to talk to an industry expert and get some feedback of the use of nitrogen for all the different vari variability that they use nitrogen, for instance, purging, uh, brazing, testing, and get a real understanding of uh, what, what the user really faces when they're working with the product. Kevin, testing. That's, that's really where we want to start. We know that there's a lot of variability in the testing, and we want to understand why. You know, why is it that one system works at one pressure and another system at another and so forth? So, One of the first things that I think a misnomer that people have is when you're using, using nitrogen, it's called dry nitrogen. So when you're actually pressure testing with nitrogen, which is going to later subsequently lead to an evacuation, you're actually removing some of the moisture from the system due to the nitrogen. So when you're pressure testing that system, and you're going up to whatever, 100 PSI, 150, 200 PSI, depending on your refrigerant, the advantage of it is, is nitrogen is actually absorbing that moisture out of the system, which is a good head start when you have to pull your 500 microns at the end. Ah, perfect. Okay. So from that perspective, when is there, why would you use one pressure testing or one pressure uh, versus another? Uh, well, it, it usually depends on the refrigerant. 410A is usually rated at 250 PSI. If you look on the unit data plate, it'll say low site test pressure. Mm -hmm. 410A is normally 250. Uh, our 22 is 150, and it'll vary between whatever refrigerant you're using. Now, if you're pressure testing, let's say a gas line, you can go up much higher. As long as you're not actually taking your pipe dope and blowing it out of the threads, you can go much higher for that. When you're talking about the gas lines, how, how high would the pressure be that they would be testing those at? I usually don't want to exceed 150 PSI. You're going to find enough of a drop at 150 PSI, when you start getting way up into the 2, 3, 4, 100, 500 PSI, you're actually asking for a leak. Mm -hmm. If you didn't thread something 100% where it's sealed tight, you can actually blow some of the pipe dope out of the threads. And I've seen it happen where people blow it up with pressurization. You can usually find a leak, bubbles at 150, 200 PSI. You're going to be able to bubble it. You'll be able to have an audio and hear it. Ah. Well, mini splits, most of them now are usually 410A. 410A, again, is a higher pressure, so it's usually going to be 250, but I've seen some mini splits rated higher. The, the problem, the limit to any high pressure is usually the metering device. It's always going, if something is going to be damaged due to high pressure, it's usually the metering device. It'll be the capillaries on the TXV. So you're always trying to avoid damaging the, the, the weakest link, which is normally your metering device. Hey, let me ask you this. We've seen and we've heard that people do testing as high as you know, five to 800 PSI. What are the applications that those would come into? Welding. Some of the welding applications. I would see welding doing that. Okay, so on the purging, what most pipe fitters do now is dry fit a system, depending on the length, the diameter of the pipe, et cetera, and they will dry fit it. When they do that, it's full of non-condensables. The non-condensables, if you purge it, is going to blow out the vast majority of it, so now you're going to be prepared to braze at a much lower PSI. Oh, okay, which brings us right to the next point, the brazing. Um, we've heard that brazing has become a critical piece of the application now using nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So can you explain the reasons why and the benefits for it? This is probably, in the industry, one of the most abused things where people don't purge. And what they think to themselves is they're somehow saving money on nitrogen, time, money, and they think they're maximizing their profit. What they're not doing is maximizing their profit because, in the end, you are doing a subpar job. You're leaving enough contaminants in the system where it's going to affect the compressor. You're going to get hydrochloric and hydrofluoric acid in the system and destroy the compressor. Now, some of these companies, that's acceptable because their reasoning is we made a higher percentage profit on the job. My goal is to create a customer for life, and you will not create customers for life with after two years, the compressor fails. After four years, the metering device capillaries plug. 
you do not create it. You might have made a one percentage profit margin higher on the install. You have now lost subsequent clean -a checks, sub subsequent PM, subsequent service calls that are billable, and in the end, you've actually paid more and you have profited less because you've just gotten a job, you've not created anything that gets future work from that client. You mentioned contaminants. Mm -hmm. So what are the contaminants that you're getting uh, that could be there that, sh that wouldn't be there if you're using the process correctly? It all comes from air and moisture. Air and moisture in the system will interact with the oil and create two acids, hydrochloric and hydrofluoric acid. The hydrochloric and the hydrofluoric acid will actually break down the oil and it will actually eventually create what's called a compressor burnout. In addition to that, I, I hear about this material that's produced when they're brazing on the copper material mm -hmm. or copper pipe. So can you give us a little more information about that? Yeah, it's called copper oxide. Basically what happens is when you braze those non-condensables, air, moisture, etc., acids, when they actually burn and create this black dust inside of it. In fact, on a commercial job, when you are actually brazing a big system, you'll have replaceable dryers, core dryers that you can isolate and replace. And on most commercial jobs, you have to replace that after the first week of operation because they didn't purge with nitrogen. Wow. Okay, so you're getting so much it build up, you just have to replace that part. It will plug a dryer and actually reduce the pressure across it. Wow, that's amazing. Kevin, first I want to tell you thank you for all that valuable information. I think uh, our company, as well as the people that witness this or have a chance to see the video, are going to learn a great deal from what you just told us. Thank you. Now, if you, if you don't mind, I want to walk you through the, the newest thing we've got. I, I mentioned earlier the new Edge uh, PFH 800 uh, pressure flow hybrid regulator. Uh, 800 just essentially means it'll go up to 800 PSI. The hybrid piece is the important piece. What we've done is we've developed a, a flow meter a meter device or a flow gauge specifically and a pressure regulator all built into one. You know, we talked about brazing, we talked about purging, we also talked about testing, and then we talked about testing at multiple pressures. Our goal was to put all of that into one device. So. Let me show you what we did. So the first thing you'll notice is the three to six cubic feet per hour brazing area. So this is designed to give you, you know, variability to be able to braze between that set point that you're looking at. The next one, which we talked about, was the purging. You know, when we, we move it up a little bit, it's a little more pressure, but what we want to be able to do is to get between 20 to 50 cubic feet an hour on purging. Now the last piece of that is the actual testing. Now, one thing that we know is that people have to have um, multiple test pressures that they're working with. So what we gave is, is, in this device, the ability to run between 200 up to 800 PSI, all within one system. Now, what we also did is, if you notice, we color-coded this so that when you look at the green bar, or as you, the light green bar, that designates the R22, and then we also have the rose-colored bar. I know this one may not look a little rose in our light, but the rose-colored bar, which is designed for the A410. So it gives the operator a quick indication of where he should be when he's doing any of his testing. Then, again, once you get into some things that you talked about, some welding applications or something a little different that takes you above that 500 PSI mark, we can go even up to the 800 level. Now, the last, what I wanted to talk about is how did we do this? This is, this is the fun part. A traditional flow gauge uses a controlled orifice through, you know, it's just a specific sized orifice with a given pressure to get a given flow. What we needed to do is create a device that allowed us to give two separate flow readings out of the same device which up until now didn't exist. So that's a patent-pended design that we did. And the, to give you, put that into context, a controlled orifice with a pressure has a linear delivery. And once you have, increase your pressure, your flow has a consistent increase. Well, the two flows that we needed wouldn't meet that requirement. So we actually developed a dual-stage orifice device that allows us to, through those changes, give us two different settings that we needed to meet the customer's needs or meet the operator's needs. So fun little stuff that we did there. A real important safety feature. Uh, there are devices in the market that have preset flows and preset pressures. 
The problem with that is the potential that if you're doing any type of low pressure or flow um, requirements and you don't allow the system to free flow, or somehow you get a back pressure in it, it will build pressure up to the maximum delivery of that particular regulator. So like for instance, if this regulator did the same thing, it could potentially pressurize the system up to 800 PSI, which as you know could be catastrophic if you're in a low uh, pressure side of the system. Mm -hmm. Well this one doesn't do that. It'll only give you the flow at the pressure that it's set for. That's the variability piece. So the other one, just some, just some nice things for the operators, hand tight makes it easier for the operator to work with or the technician to work with. We also added just something a little nice, simple, easy, put a cap on your, your outlet, make it safer to work with. For those that are familiar with the edge regulator, it's got all of the, the DNA of our re edge regulators, you know, the, the protected gauges so that it's not going to get damaged. I'm sure you being an operator yourself or a technician, the back of your truck has a lot of stuff in it. It's easy to get things damaged just from driving. Um, and the idea was, can we eliminate a few things? You know, for instance, if somebody today has multiple regulators, a flow meter, they have to put it all together, wouldn't it be nice to have one that gives them the ability to do everything? So that's, that's really where we went. Again, all of the DNA of our Edge products, all of these little safety features we added in, encapsulated into a small design, giving you easy to read gauges, one thing that I forgot to show you is just the simple color coding on the high pressure gauge. You know, we ask customers, you know, how much pressure is in a full cylinder? It's really amazing the number of times that people tell us, well, it's right there. You know, it's an indication on their dial, on their gauge. We said, no, tell us the pressure. Well, it's right there. So once we figured that out, we said, okay, all we really need to do is color code this so that they can easily see when it's in the green, oh, they've got gas. They've got their cylinders got got enough gas for them to do mm -hmm. the job. Inversely, when it gets down to the yellow, okay, I need to start looking at it a little closer. And obviously, it's in the red, it's, it's time to change. But all told, like I said, the new hybrid PFH 800 self-contained unit specifically designed to uh, help technicians like yourself in the HVAC world. First thing I noticed that I loved is the hand tight ability of the regulator. I love that you can just hand tighten it when you're in a position where you don't have your adjustable wrench nearby, et cetera. The second one that I love is that you can actually adjust this up and down depending on what you need it to do. That is a very nice feature and just how versatile it is where you can actually regulate to every need do you have all in one regulator. This seems like a grand slam.